it's, it's much harder, I think, to start right now, um, oh, yeah. you know, to find that that coveted full time position that gets you in the door. And, uh, you know, I always encourage people like you're going to hear a lot of no's. You're going to hear. A, and honestly, you won't even hear a lot of no's. You just won't hear anything. Uh, back then, when I was trying to get my foot in the door, TikTok wasn't a thing. Vine was a very obscure thing. Uh, I don't even really think it had kind of taken off at that point. Um, you know, YouTubers were very specific veins of people. They were not media people at all. So all of the tools that creators can use now to kind of get ahead of their, either their competition in terms of a job opening or just get noticed by other, you know, organizations or companies, they didn't exist back then. And I'm sure that there's, you know, a ton of jocks that will watch this or programmers and be like, yeah. And when I was there, I had to lo- know how to cut tape and you can't show someone how you can cut tape. So <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it's really like the most boomer thing about me with radio is like, well, we didn't have TikTok when I was trying to get a full time job. So I couldn't make silly, you know, parody sing song videos. Um, yeah. But I always just encourage people, you know, look, you're going to you're going to get denied a lot. You have to keep going. You know, at some point, somebody will say yes. And, you know, then it, then you have to make the choice, you know, whether it's a situation that you really, really want to be in for the next six to 12 months, you know, or, or longer than that. Most of these smaller markets, and, and really, I would argue, large markets, they're all the same. Mm-hmm. People want to be entertained. They don't want you to waste their time. They expect a quality product. Uh, they expect a consistent product. And I think that when we look at ourselves as consumers of media, I go to the same movie theater chain no matter what town I'm in because that theater has a standard of quality. I know that I'm not going to walk in and, you know, oh, wow, your concession is just like popcorn and two choices of soda. Like, that's it. I I, I think most markets, people in general, carry the same values. And sometimes it might be a little more conservative. Sometimes it might be a little more liberal, um, you know, a little bit more higher, a little higher income, a little lower income. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I think every market now is such an amalgamation of its of each other. I've been around enough smaller and larger markets to know that, you know, people are people. And and I think if you really want to make an impact, you know, look at the things that make an impact to you as a as a person and as a consumer, because I think we in radio get so caught up in this mindset that if I can do 18 things, as long as there's somebody who can't do 19 things, they won't fire me. Mm -hmm. And, and instead I, and I used to think like that a lot. And to your point that you made earlier, I I kind of gradually started looking at it from a standpoint of it's not about giving me a checklist of skills to keep me employed in radio. Mm -hmm. It's about giving me a, an exposure to things that I've never done, Mm -hmm. you know, learn something new, but also what skills can I take outside of this? If something ever happens or I just decide that, or radio decides that its journey is done with me or that I'm done with it, where else? You know, I mean, I'm going to work until I'm three and a half feet into the grave. So I got to, I got to be good at something. So let me find other things that can keep me engaged, keep me entertained. I mean, it's almost like I'm parenting myself at work a little bit, like, okay, how can he stay engaged in the classroom? Um, (laughs) Looking at these opportunities less as, job security and more as self-growth, which I hope is healthy. My therapist says it's healthy. So (laughs) I'll take, I'll take their word for it. One of the things that I've really noticed over the last year, I mean, obviously there's been massive layoffs. There's been people who have been, you know, let go from the industry to your point, they're talented. They've never done, they're not doing anything wrong Mm -hmm. or, or they're not failing at anything. It's just Numbers are numbers at the end of the day, and that's fine. I, I understand. I'm, I'm not saying that everything should be free. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that I that really, I don't want to say it, it upsets me, but it's just, it's disheartening to me is when I see people who just don't embrace the freedom. You know, obviously there are the practical sides, getting an income, health insurance, you know, a lot of people have families, you know, uh, that they have to take care of. And they're rightfully so they're kind of freaking out. Like, how am I going to, you know, once my severance or unemployment or whatever I have carrying me runs out, what do I do? Because I'm sure most salespeople don't have, or excuse me, most radio people don't have 50 grand sitting in their savings because Mm -hmm. they've worked in radio for (laughs) X amount of years, making just enough to get through. 
unless they have, you know, side hustles, they're doing things, you know, that are, that are supplementing that. Mm -hmm. But it's been disheartening to see people not embrace the freedom of not having that constriction. You know, I mean, how many radio people have done something super fun, super creative and had a boss say, I don't get it. Don't Mm -hmm. put it up on the website. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. But, or you try to, even you try to explain the idea, let alone you went out and executed it. And you, you know, you get handcuffed and that is just like any, any other, you know, creative industry. I think Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you were bad at it or that it was a bad idea. It just means that someone else who gives a final thumbs up has a different vision for the direction than you do. And instead of just saying, okay, yeah, I don't get it, but I understand how it fits. Um, Obviously I don't think anybody's going rogue and creating something that's a train wreck on purpose, (laughs) but to the point of the freedom, now you don't have that, you know, you can go on TikTok and say whatever you want. You can go, uh, you know, create video content and, you know, go on Twitch, go on YouTube and, and handle however you want to be creative podcast, do whatever you want and podcast because you really love talking about something that didn't at all fit who you were, your personality on your former station but that is really, you're really passionate about. And maybe you were squelched a little bit. Uh, and there are people, you know, that I see that just completely fall back into the, I got to hurry up and get a new radio gig. And then you ask like, okay, well, hey, are you podcasting? Are you, are you doing daily, you know, mm-hmm. film yourself 60 seconds, check in every day on like TikTok or Instagram or whatever. Oh, well, that's too much work. And, and you know, how am I going to make money off of that? Yeah, it's not. I mean, this whole creativity and being a creator is such a long term. It's a long con. It really is. It's not something that you can play the short game at. I think radio needs people that are creative. And if this format, if this medium is going to continue to grow and evolve, I, I really think it needs to continue to embrace. I mean, there are definitely a lot of great companies and program directors and, and, you know, VPs of programming and ops managers who, who embrace creative people. And that's very great to see, yeah. you know, I see so much great creative content online, whether it's big and over the top and it's trying to be viral or it's just something simply mm-hmm. executed well, yep. uh, that is engaging and fun. I think there's so much of it out there. And while there is a segment of the industry that is fostering that and looking to that as, Hey guys, this is where we're going. I still feel that, a, there is a slightly larger segment that is not ready to embrace that yet. Mm-hmm. And as a whole, I think that kind of creates a little cloud over the industry of like, we can be adventurous, but we're not going to go past the edge of the driveway. Like we'll, we'll run as fast as we can in the space we have and as creatively as we can, but we're still not going past that edge point because data or whatever, you know, sometimes you just got to do things. You know, I, I got into a habit when I was, in Ithaca of uh, basically telling my GM, cause I mean, it was me and my GM, you know, we didn't have, we had two salespeople. So it wasn't like we had this great big complex management structure mm-hmm. of like a regional DOS and then our, you know, assistant GM and then our GM, it was me and him. And that was it. He handled the biz. I handled the radio side and it somehow worked, but you know, I, I always got in the habit of telling them, you know, when I put together a promotion or, you know, a, a programming campaign idea, I'd say, look, this is going to happen whether it's sponsored or not. So here's a great opportunity to make some revenue to help us. And I'll do that, whatever, you know, if there's something I can do to help that happen, let me know, but it's going to happen because it needs to. And I think radio sometimes needs to be creative. Those things need to happen, whether you're able to sell a, you know, Jimmy Chevrolet, you know, name drop on the end of it or not. And sometimes on the converse of that, because an idea is good, don't water it down. You know, don't look for the reason that you have to sell it to Jimmy Chevrolet, you know, let creative people create and have fun and and bring that joy back to what we're doing. The adage, I think of it's a show, not a shift, I think is so important, you know, and I know that that's not new. And I I absolutely didn't create that. I heard that back when I was, you know, starting in radio, but I think that it's such a great approach to the whole industry. Mm -hmm. These are shows, these are entertainment products. Mm -hmm. Like everything else, I think what radio struggles with is how do we assimilate that? How do we incorporate that into what we're doing to continue to be successful? Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that's very evident when you have situations where 
you know, companies or operators are telling their talent, you have to have a podcast. Yes. Every, everybody has to have a podcast. And so then you get three episodes of afternoon person plus morning third chair. <laughs> and they're talking about, you know, whatever gossipy thing. And then instantly after the first episode posts and they're, de- you know, everything needs some room to grow and fine tune. Mm-hmm. But after the, the second episode, it's, Hey, what do you guys want to hear about? What should we talk about on our next episode? And it's like, so, so that's it. You know, that's it. You're, you're done. You're done. And that's fine because I, I don't blame people who are in that spot because totally. you were forced to do it. Absolutely. You know, you, you, creativity cannot be forced. You can't tell someone go be creative. Nope. Um, so we can sell it like that's you, you can't do that. So I think now you've seen the acceptability of podcasting and, and I don't mean cutting up clips of your show and putting it on your station website. Um, <laughs> yes. That's not podcasting at all. Uh, podcasting is real conversations, real, real monologues, real insight, uh, opinion, and it can be about such niche, niche things. And I think we've seen that the more niche, the weirdly more successful it is. 100%. Where in radio, it's like, well, you know, you can't talk specifically to one person. You have to be a little more inclusive. Um, but podcasting is like the complete opposite. Like, I, you know, you are you really into a specific form of crochet? You couldn't <laughs> talk about that on the air, but yeah. you can go for hours on podcasts and people will listen. People will view the content that you create with it. Um, I think radio is getting better at incorporating that. As I said, I think where it's still, pardon me, where it still just is kind of out of reach is allowing people to just continue to be themselves. And again, it's, it's anecdotal, you know, I mean, yes, there are operators who let their talents podcast, Mm -hmm. whatever content they want, as long as you're creating it and posting it and it's not, you know, pissing off people (laughs) at large, I think we're they're they're fine with it. Um, But there are definitely people who, and I've worked for some of these people who see any change outside of that little box that sits in an office as, I mean, that's not us. I mean, it's, I get it. It's a thing, but like, it's not us. You know I mean? I've worked with, I've worked with managers who, who would say in meetings, yeah, I know the company thinks I'm the anti-digital guy, but it's just really radio is more important. It's not that I'm anti-digital. When (laughs) when every, you know, every other market in the company is reporting these huge gain monetary gains in digital ads and digital sales. It's like, well, you don't have to necessarily be pro or anti-digital. You should be pro-revenue. Right. <laughs> nobody's nobody's anti-revenue, right? And again, I think it just goes back to where where is the environment where we all agree on the direction, you know, on on the branding, on the familiarity. You know, they tell you be yourself, and so okay, so I want to do a podcast on true crime mm-hmm. and like unsolved cold case murders, and it's really heavy stuff, but that's what I'm into. Yeah. And they say, well, yeah, but like, you know, we're the, we're the at work station. We're the mom in the van station. And they don't want to hear you talk about, you know, Jack the Ripper and, you know, the Black Dahlia murders. It's like, no, but guess what? They're going home and they're watching Netflix and they're watching 18 different murder, you know, serial murder documentaries. So, you know, let people be themselves. And I think podcasting is a great opportunity for people to be themselves Uh, and to be creative the way they want to. And again, that's kind of, I think, one of my overall uh, philosophies when it comes to radio is let people be themselves, even if you don't understand it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially because it seems like it's all these kind of one-offs that go make things Mm -hmm. happen. You know, lots of times it's, hey, we have this idea. You're right. The person has to just kind of do it themselves to even prove that it's successful. And even then, sometimes it's just completely on their own. Yeah, people are like, well, I don't know. But and I think earlier you mentioned something about there being like, like the anti radio thing. It's almost Yeah, that anything that's entertainment outside of radio is looked at as like anti radio. And it's like, well, you know, what are you and I don't I don't understand that. Like, it's so weird. Marrying them all together under this brand just seems so fun and exciting. And like, so, you know, look, everybody's goals are different. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I know we when we spoke last time, um, you know, I mentioned that ego is a huge part of our industry. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. Everybody wants to shine. Everybody wants to be, you know, be the, the man or the woman, you know, be, be that, that gold star. And, and I think that's great. Cause I think that does 
give us, you know, some motivation internally. Um, you know, if I was asked by somebody who's either looking to kind of get their break or maybe it's somebody who's just looking for a new situation, you know, cause I think sometimes we, we only look at people, in, you know, the part-time promo people or part-time weekend swing people who are trying to get a full-time show. Uh, we only look at them at, we look at them as the only ones in this boat, but you know, think about the person who's been at their station doing afternoons or, or middays or nights even for mm -hmm. four or five years. And there's a great staff around them that are not going anywhere because they're compensated handsomely. They're well-liked within the building uh, or in the community. So they have no incentive to chase and kind of create that opening locally where they're at. Um, but anybody who's looking to, to change their situation, I would say, number one, you know, don't just lean on what you do over the radio, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that should kind of be a given, but, you know, look at what you do well outside of it. You don't have to be great at every single social media platform. It helps, you know, yeah. it, it's like the more, the better you are with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok, you know, the more you can cross, you know, platform and you can share content that you created on one to the other and all of that. And, you know, understanding it is that great, but, you know, to what we spoke about earlier, when people say, oh, well, you got to make three Facebook posts a shift, you know, three Facebook posts a show. If you've got someone who cares nothing about Facebook, they literally just, okay, here it is. I've said it. So I don't have to worry about getting yelled at it. And, and that's fine. You know, if, if a certain platform on social media is not your thing, that's okay. Don't feel like you have to lie and, and like, oh man, I got to hurry up and get good at Twitter because, yeah. you know, uh, I want to show somebody just, lean into what you are good at. Maybe you're great at podcasting. Maybe you're great at just making video content. And, you know, one of the things that I think people forget is it's not even, it's not even creating the content. It is the mechanical creation. Maybe you are a great video editor. Maybe you're great with lighting and sound and getting things to just be fantastic and take your, you know, C level content but it looks like an A because the edits are great and you, you know, you, you understand how to light and you understand you know, including closed captions because of accessibility issues, you know, little things like that people notice. And so I would say if you're looking to get into a new situation or, or step into a better situation, continue to lean into the things that you are good at and the things that you do well. You don't have to do everything okay. You just need to do the things that are true to you very well. And just like uh, a professional sports team has a very specific need when they sign a free agent or, or draft a new player, they, they don't draft them and just see where they shake out because, you know, hey, you're going to have to play a little bit of every position. You're going to have to wear many hats, uh, figuratively and literally. They say, no, we, we are drafting you or we're bringing you into our organization for this specific purpose so you can shine at it. And I think once radio starts to get back into a space where it can look at creatives that way, of what can this person do for us? They can be a great video person for us. I mean, every radio station at this point needs to have a great video person on staff, yep. hands down. If you want to compete and you want to get better revenue going forward, you need a good video person. And they might already uh, be on your staff. They absolutely could already be on your staff, but they have to film things on their phone because you won't spring $2,000 or $3,000 to buy a decent camera setup. Yeah. And, oh, well, you know, it's not in the budget and things are tough. Okay, so yes, we won't spend two thousand dollars to make you know fifteen thousand dollars in digital revenue because now you can actually make commercials for your clients yeah. and you can charge them to make those commercials and they'll pay it you yeah. know they'll they'll pay it as long as you're not trying to you know you know rob them on the train um, but you know continue to find people that you know for radio people who are hiring and management continue to find people who do things well that will help your your operation don't just find, you know, people who are good at a little bit of everything, because that's all you'll ever get from them is a little bit of everything. You won't get anything that necessarily stands out. Um, if you are looking for that new situation, continue to hone what you do well, very well, get better at it, lean into it. You know, when I air check jocks over the years, you know, my biggest message is let's lean into your strengths. I'm not going to change your bad habits. We can't change your bad habits but we can make your better habits stronger so that they just always take press, you know, they take a prominent position over your bad habits. And, you know, for everybody 
hire good people, be a good person. You know, the more good people that you can put on a radio staff or put into a building, the better the environment's going to be. We've all worked in an environment that is toxic, Mm -hmm. that is, you know, has a bad morale. And, you know, unless you bring in people who want to create a good environment or or an environment that is positive, it's hard to, it's hard to change that. And then, you know, uh, from the, from the talent side of it, no one wants to work with a dick. (laughs) right? (laughs) And, you know, look, even if you are not, even if you don't feel like you're a good person, it doesn't take a lot to be a good person when you interact, you know, uh, and it's not being fake. It's just understanding that, you know, I, I may be struggling with stuff myself and, and I've been through this and I, mm-hmm. I still, you know, to a certain degree, I still go through this where I have days where I just feel like I'm a bad person. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. I'm not a good person, but you know, you, you try to be kind to people, you try to support people and whether that's a tweet or a like, or, you know, a share or whatever that is, I always tend to, you know, gravitate towards people who I think really, you know, obviously we share, I, I think, similar views on a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it, it's just about being kind to everybody and, and understanding that good people get ahead far more than somebody who just, you know, has a lot of followers on, mm-hmm. you know, a platform or a lot of views or listens or, you know, whatever the metric is, you know, it really boils back down to your point of who really owns you as mm-hmm. a person, your personality, your persona, um, and, and everything that it creates. I mean, I know some companies in a contract will say what you create with us stays with us. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times, you know, contracts are not going to always be employee friendly Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in any industry. (laughs) Surprise. Um, that's not a radio thing. That's just in general, that's an, that's a capitalism thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so to the point of, you know, using what you create, And a company saying, well, that's our property. I mean, at the end of the day, look, if you're going to sue somebody because they're wildly successful with something else and they decide they want to go down that route, where was the failure when you didn't find a way to use that to your own benefit? Yes. You know, to me, it's just sour grapes. It's, oh, well, you know, Mm -hmm. you said that you weren't going to do this, but now you're so successful doing that. And, uh, you know, we invested money. It's like, okay, great. Why six months ago, did you not have a conversation of, Hey, you're doing this really well. How do we make money off of it? Cut us in. We'll help you. We'll give you resources. We'll, we'll help support. However, how do we get a slice of that? Because surprise, we're not doing any work. Mm -hmm. Salespeople aren't going out to have to, you know, pound the streets to put a package in front of clients. You know, our digital team is not, I mean, you're doing everything. Yeah. So, Hey, if you want to sell it, we'll give you X, you know, we'll give you 5% more commission than we normally would a non, you know, a non salesperson or a standard commission. Yeah. It, it's just, it, it's like a non compete to me, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. when, when people have to sit through non competes, it's like, okay, well, yeah, you should pay everybody severance if you have to let them go, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, no matter what. And that severance should just exist. And if they go work at Target the next day, guess what? You're still paying them because yeah. that's what you owed them. And that's what you promised them. It's not conditional. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, and again, that's something where in the contract, they may say, if it's in the contract and it says, we'll pay you X amount, you know, three months worth of salary, which by the way, you'll probably lose about 45% uh, <laughs> on taxes because they'll pay it to you all at once as a payroll tax. Uh, okay. Um, you know, we'll pay you 90 days if we have to terminate this contract prematurely or whatever it is. If you don't like that, say, hey, I want this unconditional. Mm-hmm. No matter what, if you end this contract, I want that severance no matter what I do after. Yeah. Uh, I think it's born from the era of we're afraid that popular morning show is going to go across the street just at a whim because they're going to pay them more. And I understand that point of a non-compete. 100%. But If you are not staying on the air, if you are letting someone go, I don't care. I've essentially given the signal that I don't care what you do. Mm -hmm. Because if, again, if I was able to and I wanted to, why did I not find a way to continue that? If I think you're so valuable to my competition Mm -hmm. across the street and you're going to take money away and clients are going to leave, well, if I just you know, if I'm going to be petty and sue you for a breach, you know, a a breach of a non-compete, why didn't I keep you? Right. Now, if you leave as an employee, (laughs) if you leave voluntarily, 
then sure, there's absolutely a protection there. Yeah. But if I'm the one both saying you can't work here, but also you can't work somewhere else. Yeah. I don't like that. That doesn't square. That, that's the part. I, yeah. That I just never understand from a, you know, I, I get, you know, legally we talk about all sure. the, the black and white stuff on paper, but I don't understand that, especially when it's something like not even like getting a job, other radio job. It's no, nope, yeah. you can't do a podcast under this name anymore. We let you go. Yeah. And even though we did nothing with this and we're not doing yep. anything with it now, we're just sitting absolutely, just so absolutely pretty to me. And I don't, it's like the you irony. Beat these people down to begin with. <laughs> it is. And, and I think it's what contributes to, you know, the, the, the connotation of the employee employer relationship in radio specific, or I should say in media specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm always surprised whenever I do see a radio company suing somebody yeah. because they know exactly how much they were paying them and, Trust me, if any company I've ever worked for decided to sue me, it's like, what do you guys want? Do you guys want some pizza coupons? Right. Do you want an Applebee's gift certificate? Because you paid me. You know how much money I have. Yes. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, or at least mm-hmm. it's not publicized very often. But I think that the cases that I've seen, there's always an opportunity where I could ask the question, man, if they're that, if they're that raw over the situation, what were they doing to try to incorporate? Like, you look to make money off of everything. Why weren't you trying to make money off that yes, or that yes. skill or that, that, that product while it was still completely possible for you to do so? Yep, exactly. It's like, it's like the little kids, they don't want the toy, but then when they see mm-hmm. another kid playing with it, no, I want that toy now. You Absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and you're, uh, oh my God, that's such a great analogy of it. It's, it's not that they don't want it, it's just they don't want someone else to have it. Yes. But yes. for what, you know, mm-hmm. for what? <laughs> the biggest station in our country the most successful financial station in our country, if they wanted to bring in some media creative to do nights, if they said, hey, let's go to YouTube, let's find the most popular, most revenized YouTuber available right now, and we want to bring them in to do a show, they'll get laughed out of the room. Yeah. Why would somebody who is that successful online making more than what the GM is making a month decide, oh, I want to go to radio yes. to grow. What, to grow what? Right. You're already grown. You've grown past. I mean, there are YouTubers who have more cum than half the stations in a state combined. That's such on a, a great point. Day. So true. So, you know, again, it's just a function of if radio doesn't find a way to assimilate those people before they get to that point and, and make them feel welcomed and encouraged and, and able to grow, then yeah, they will be competing with them. And some of them may not, may not be winning. I mean, YouTubers aren't going down to the local hardware store for dollars. And that's where radio hides in that shadow of, well, yeah, but you know, Spotify can't service Mike's hardware as well as we can. And they're right. They're right. they're right to a very large degree, but you're not going to be able to rely on that forever because, you know, when I was in Milwaukee, there were a couple, you know, local, what I would consider media personalities who mm-hmm. They had worked in radio for a bit, maybe in and out. Um, you know, some of them have since left radio on whatever terms, but they're still hugely successful social creators mm-hmm. that I would argue could go to any local business and say, hey, you know, if, if you're Marie and you're, you know, the, the person to know in Colorado Springs, I guarantee you, you could go to Mike's Hardware and say, hey, you know what? You know, the tool calendars they do, I'd love to do one with like my dog. Mm -hmm. How fun would that be? Oh, and by the way, uh, I know that the local radio station only has, you know, 15,000 visitors a month to their website. And I average that, you know, I average 20,000 views a week, a week. Yep. You could absolutely, with no sales structure, no commission, no anything, you could absolutely get them involved with your podcast, your show, your webisodes, whatever. And guess what? You have sound processing equipment. You can record them. You can make better video than your local radio station is making for pre-roll ads. Like, again, if we don't find ways to incorporate these people and make them part of our, our, our success story as radio, we are, we are going to lose to them. And we're not going to be able to rely on the, oh, well, you know, Spotify, I mean, Spotify is not the competition, right? You know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's the same, it's the same argument that uh, cable is having with streaming. You know, it's not radio versus TV or radio versus internet streaming. 
I mean, most stations are on multiple platforms. I mean, my station is on iHeartRadio. It's on radio.com. It's on TuneIn. We have, we had for a time, our own apps. We stream from our website. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's no way. And, and, you know, to a large part, that's a big strategy decision because you want to be where your listeners are, no matter what. You don't want to say, oh, well, we're on iHeart station. So we're not going to be on (laughs) iHeartRadio. Right. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Um, But I think if we don't find ways to incorporate these creative people and learn from them, help them, help them, you know, into the conversation of how can we grow? Like we're not idolizing them, but they know something obviously that a lot of people in our building haven't caught yet. What is that? What can we, what can we get from that in value? Um, and, and allow them to find ways, look, you want to keep doing your show. You want to monetize your show. Go ahead. Yep. Like I, I, I can't pay you what you were going to make there, but I can supplement that. I, I'd be willing to supplement it to get a portion of that back into my building, whether that's through ratings and increasing you know, agency buys or just notoriety. Hey, yeah. Mike's Hardware works with Marie on her dog calendar. And Marie's also the midday person on this station. What can we do? Like, hey, bring your, bring your sales guy with you to a meeting and, and be the conduit for that. But yeah. yeah, there's so many fun marketing ideas. Absolutely. Like, there's just so many great things you can do with that. Like, uh, like you said, it's worth its whole other, you know, it's worth a whole other conversation. And, and I think the downside is there are a lot of people who don't want to have that conversation yet. They don't yeah. understand. They, they don't even understand that they need to have that conversation yet. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see how those things you were just talking about kind of change the sales structures even, you know, especially because mm-hmm. I've always used examples where I've seen, you know, people, r- random influencers get paid more on their social media than like somebody on the, 100%. you know, doing an, an endorsement. And sometimes that's yeah. because the company took some off the top of it. So I think once people start realizing this, wait a second, I can monetize and there's no salesperson in the middle and I'm getting yep. this. I feel like it kind of alters radio into being the added value part. So it's like, I'm selling mm-hmm. my social, all this for a little bit more. You can also get an ad on the radio, you know, and that's kind of on our, our website. The irony is, you know, I, I've, I've known operations that will allow salespeople to basically operate their own sales agency. Oh, so really? that person's double dipping. Oh yeah. So uh-huh. yep. They, they mm-hmm. go get a client for their agency and then they sell, basically sell themselves radio ads and take a slice off that too. Yeah. Why not find ways to actually make it? I mean, once the money goes out of the coffers, who cares how it gets split up, whatever ways, but how do we find ways to increase that revenue in? I mean, as a jock, anyone, any jock that watches this can instantly think right now of a time where they were talking in a salary negotiation and the word, yeah, we'll have endorsements, we'll have remote fees, you know, it'll almost, you know, you'll make an extra five, 10, whatever. Everyone's <laughs> drive heard the that. company vehicle. <laughs> Everyone's heard that. Yeah. But what happens, you know, in a pandemic, not even, not even hedging to unfulfilled promises, but what happens in a pandemic when guess what? No one's doing remotes. No one's paying wow. fees. No one's doing endorsements because advertisers are not spending locally anymore. Yeah. For whatever reason. Um, it's, it's programming. People cannot control their income the way salespeople can. Yeah. But, you know, if you're an influencer, if you're a local brand, a local celebrity, I guess, for lack of a better word, go down to that restaurant and say, Hey, let's partner on something cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to high school with the guy who owns it and we're going to work on this thing. And yeah, I'm not getting money, but guess what? I don't pay when I eat there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. You know, nobody's taking taxes off of it. Nobody's, you know, taking a slice off of it. It's just, it's a pure working relationship. And that's going to, I think, do more in the long run for both the influencer and the business mm-hmm. than just Absolutely. the salesperson coming in the middle and being like, Hey, so we know pandemic is bad. We can offer you uh, discounted spots on our radio, yeah. but you know, like- yeah. a lot of what we talked about today of guys, you don't need to say yes to the first suitor who has a microphone. Yes. You know, you don't have to say yes to the first thing that comes across. You can be discriminatory. You can, you can choose what fits you. The biggest thing you have to understand is it's not going to be easy. Yep. It's going to take time, but that time can be accelerated by what you already can do and having a plan. Mm-hmm. It's weird. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. And I think, I think radio is the same way. I mean, I think if, you know, what you're doing is amazing in the sense of how quickly you've been able to really build it, you know, like, like we talked about last time, I think, you know, you oh. were kind of just, it was a hobby and it was fun. And then you just decided, you know what, I really want to grow this. And once we make that decision of, I really want to grow this. Uh, then it just skyrockets. Yep. Especially if you've got the hobby passion part down first, mm-hmm. 
That's what mm-hmm. I tell people too. You know, I, I have some, somebody recently came to me and they're like, I'm not trying to get rich off this idea, but I think it'll benefit me and the station or whatever. I was like, then just start yeah. doing it. I think then that's just the best mindset to have. Yeah. The, the worst thing you can do is wait for someone else to say, okay, because radio is not going to say, yeah, I, I vetted this idea and I agree with it the way it is on paper. You go execute it. Mm-mm. Yep. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. So, you know, I would say if you're on the beach, if you're recently on the beach, or if at some point you might be on the beach, Mm -hmm. understand that your skills are transferable. You know, if you've run any sort of promotion as a programmer or a DJ or a promotions person, you can almost take any marketing job that's out there. There's, 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 unless you're, unless it's for like a giant global brand, like Apple or Coke or Pepsi, you're going to get a job you know, in pretty much your local region in any marketing position, you're well qualified, especially if they uh, know if you, you they're like, Oh, school it's, for it. it's, it's, Oh, so-and-so from the radio. You know what I mean? Like somebody yeah. in the building, you know, you kind of have that. Absolutely. Like, up on people. Yeah. You know, so, so understand, you know, all the skills that you learned, whether it's working the front desk, helping with engineering, um, just being creative, uh, your skills are not limited to talking into a microphone, uh, and, and saying call letters and, you know, that's my, that's my Ted talk for anyone who might be struggling with it. Thank you for coming. No, you literally, Namaste. you literally <laughs> said like everything perfectly. That's why I was like, okay, don't interrupt him. Just let him. <laughs>